Hey guys, what's up? Rasola here, and I thought I would make a tutorial to teach you guys how to use open broadcast software to do any recording, since a lot of you have messaged me with my friends in VR chat and a lot of you watching these videos that you want to start recording and you don't know what to use or how to use any of it. So what I use, what Nags uses, what Aurora uses, what a lot of people that record in VR chat use is open broadcast software. Now to get open broadcast software, it's completely free. You just go to obsproject.com, open broadcast software, download OBS Studio. There is another option to get uh, open broadcast software classic. We are not going to be using classic. Classic is what they used to use. Now they use OBS Studio. So if you just go to the home, that's the first option right here. And once you get OBS Studio, you're gonna have this right here. You won't have these or quite this, but you'll have this screen pretty blank. Uh, you'll first thing you're gonna have to do is create a scene. So to create a scene, you just hit this little plus button right here, or right click in the white spots and hit add, and then make a scene. You can name it whatever you want. It's good if it's relevant. Let's make tutorial for the length of this tutorial. Great, so now we have a scene. This is what you need to put anything into this screen right here. Like, as you see, this is, uh, I got stream here. This is what I use for when I stream. It has a game source. It's blank right now because the game is not there, but if I do BRB, oh look, we got an image, be right back. The source is an image on my hard drive called be right back. And how this works, what you're gonna wanna do, uh, what I suggest you do because it'll work for pretty much anything, is you have one of two ways of going about this. You can either do a desktop capture. This might not detect all full screen games, however, so I personally avoid it. And it also detects other things that pop up over what you're doing. So if I get a Steam message, it would pop up. And I don't always want that to show. So what I do here is I make a game capture. Now how do you do that? You can do the same thing. Right click under sources and add or hit the plus. And this is the display capture. This is where you get what I just showed you. What we want though is game capture. If you pick display capture, you have to do pretty much no editing at all. It just works exactly like this. You can just see everything. So we want to go to game capture here. And now, all right, so game capture. I already have a game capture. So game capture two, uh, let's, let's call this tut capture, okay? So now we have capture, a game capture, alright? So here's the default. Here's the default screen you get. Uh, we don't want this. This is you can, this is useful, but it could also be a little conflicting sometimes depending on what you're doing. What I do is capture a specific window. Now, to do this now, what happens is you have to launch your game first. And once your game's launched, you come to this screen, and then you click on here, on window, and you select the game. So if I had... I see I have Twitch launched, I can select Twitch. If I had a game launch, I could select it. It just has to be an EXE, any kind of full screen application really. If you don't know how to get back to this screen, after you closed it and you want to select it while you're in game, well that's easy. What I do is I right click on Tut Capture right here, and then I hit Properties, and boom, we're here. Specific window, boom, select. Pick one, hit OK, and then if you go back any other time, it'll stay this. Even if you have closed your game, it will the window will stay here, so it will always default to that window. That's why here I have one specifically for VR Chat. If you look here, it has VR Chat selected, even though I'm not running it. This is this is just for convenience. It's so that you don't have to really do it over again. You can make one for every game. You could just change it with other games, like I do here in the stream one. Another way to get to that screen would just be to have this selected and then hit, hit this uh, little properties button right here and then boom, you're here. You don't really have to touch anything else here. You can if you want, but you don't have to. It's not required and none of it's really that helpful unless you're having some issues. Next, you have to make sure you're ready to record in the first place. Now that you have the ability to, first make sure your audio levels are good. So. Check to make sure that your desktop isn't overpowering your mic, your mic isn't overpowering your desktop, whatever you really need to do. This all here, we can leave this alone, we don't need to touch this. Next thing we want to do is go into settings here. Now that we're in settings, the first thing we want to do is go to video, because that's the easiest thing to do. 
First things first, make sure the base resolution matches your monitor resolution. Unless you have a really bad computer, make sure the scaled resolution does as well. Because this is what it's detecting, and this is what it's recording. So if you scale it down, then it has to go through this downscale filter here to lower the quality of it to, you know, just make it easier to record, render, and upload and all that. You do probably want to record in what you're playing in though. I guess unless you have a 4K monitor, you can lower it to this. Uh, downscale filter, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just three different filters you can run it through. This is the sharpest. This is sharp enough, but not that demanding. This is the easiest to scale down, but it's blurry. It's much, it's not as good of a quality. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is the FPS here. Now, depending on what you're using to edit, you can choose exactly how you want to do this. Uh, most people would think, oh, let me just record at 30 or, or 60. Yeah, that's the smart thing to do. I mean, that is a smart thing to do. It's not like a bad thing. But a lot of the, especially bigger professional recording softwares, they don't render in 30 or 60. They go by little standards, which for the most part are 59.94 instead of 60 or 29.97. What I use is 29.97 because that's what it's going to render as anyway. And look, you might get like one more frame by not recording that extra 0 0.03 FPS, you know. So hey, boom. Next you just want to go to audio if you ha and if you were having any problems setting up the mixer over here, this is where you would uh, set all this information here like, oh, do you want this mono stereo? What do you want the sample rate to be? What do you want to be your default stuff? This is usually pretty good by default though. It's because default typically detects anything that you're using. Then you want to go over here to output. Make sure this isn't simple because it's just so much easier to understand, especially if you're new. Uh, the first thing we want to look at is down here, recording. Because we're going to be recording, right? It's probably going to default you as one of these things right here. Fuck this, okay? Go and select same as stream because you want to set this stuff manually. Recording format, I use MP4 just because it's a lot easier to work around than FLVs. But you can use whatever you prefer. I, I prefer MP4. Streaming. Now, this is where we're going to set our actual recording information right here. So the audio bitrate caps out at 320 for recording. For streaming, it's 160. And now you can use this for streaming or recording. This is this tutorial is helping you with both of those things. I put 320 because I'm a bit of an audiophile, I want the best, even if it's not going to stream it that by default, which you could tell it to, I want to get the best I can while I'm recording, it doesn't even do 320 when you record anyway, but hey. And then the encoder, uh, you're pretty safe to leave this as whatever your default uh, hardware option is. If you don't have a hardware option, the software x264 is good, this is a good codec to use for your encoding. Um, this shouldn't cause any problems at all, this is not really a big choice. If I was you, I would use hardware over software though, if you have the option. Lastly, we have the video bitrate. Now this is the big thing. This is going to really, this is what defines how well your video is going to look, and how good it's going to be, if this is going to be very blurry. Now here's the thing though, YouTube, if you're uploading to YouTube or streaming to YouTube or Twitch, they have little limits. They don't really let you have the quality you want. Now, so for streaming, what I do is I do 6,000, that's 6 megabits, basically, of data. When I record, I do 16 megabits, or 16,000 kilobits. If you're streaming, then what you want to do at this point in time is check your internet speed, check your upload speed. The speed they give you always is in megabits. It's not bytes, it's bits. That's what they're giving you. It's M, capital M, lowercase b. That number right there is in the thousands here. Make sure that whatever you select here does not exceed that. If you're streaming to YouTube, I would not suggest doing over 6,000 unless you just really have the internet upload speed to spare because YouTube doesn't really take that much from you over 6K for streaming. For recording, assuming you're doing 1080p, and that's what I've been assuming this whole time is that you're doing a 1080p recording. You can actually look up YouTube specific recommendations per frame rate and per monitor resolution. Assuming you're working at the same thing I'm working at, now you have to choose what you want to actually 
prioritize here because this is also going to take up more hard drive space and it's going to be more demanding the higher you put up the bit rate. Now YouTube does not take anything more than 8,000, 8 megabits. That is basically the most they will take from a video. As I said, I recorded 16,000. Why? Because I like to have that extra space. I render it at 16K. When you render it, the qu some of the quality drops off. It usually goes down by like 2K. I just like to have that extra leeway space and a crisper file to look at when I am editing. You can set this to whatever you want, whatever you think works for you. My suggestion though, if you don't know what to go with, if you're streaming and you know your internet speed is say 10 megabits or more, do anywhere between four to 6,000 if you're recording, do a minimum, a minimum of 8,000, pre more preferably 10,000 or higher. Don't go higher than 16,000. That is not necessary for recording for putting on YouTube. Finally, the last thing you need to do is look here at the stream section. Now this is only if you're streaming. If you're recording, congratulations, you know all you need to know. This is only for streamers. You could leave right now if you're just here for recording. But if you're interested in streaming, now you have to do this. You have to look at this list right here. So make sure you are selecting streaming services. Uh, pick whatever the hell you're going to stream on. You're going to stream on Mixer. Pick uh, one of these. I actually don't know which one is better. Uh, Twitch, if you're going to stream on Twitch. YouTube, YouTube Gaming, if you're streaming on that. Anything else, you can hit Show All Services and get the full list. Uh, you want, if you're streaming on YouTube like I do, select the primary ingest server. They all have different options. And then there, somewhere in your channel, on whatever you're using, you will have a stream key. You have to put that in here. And then hit Apply and OK. Save all your changes. And then boom, you're ready to go. Now all you have to do now is hit start recording, start streaming, whatever it is you came here to do. Hopefully this helped. Thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, you want to see any more tutorials, let me know. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.